I first read the Selma script in 2007. And uh, upon reading it, just knew I was going to play this part. Um, it took another three years before a director came along who felt the same way, and then another four years before we're here actually shooting it. So it's actually been a seven-year journey. But in that time, you know, I've steeped myself in getting to know about him, the movement, and, you know, American history as a result. Not this Christmas, but the Christmas before, I sent an email to Pathé saying, look, do I need to eat more turkey than I otherwise would? What are we doing, guys? And uh, they said, no, we just, we need a director. We need the right director. And I said, look, I've just done this film with this lady called Ava DuVernay. Uh, it's a film called Middle of Nowhere. She won Best Director at Sundance for it. It's a brilliant piece of work. I think she's a genius. Please consider her. And uh, <clears throat> initially, because, you know, this film is of a certain budget level and we made Middle of Nowhere for $200,000, it was like, uh, that's not going to work. Um, but I badgered and pushed and got them to watch the film. And because they are clever people, they saw how brilliant this lady is. And that was the beginning of this journey. I really mean it when I say this woman is a genius. You know, her ability with story, her, her, just her, 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 the way she's able to get under the skin of who, who we are as human beings. And the fact that her family are from Lowndes County, literally from the county between Selma and Montgomery. So she just knows this, this history. It's in her DNA. The big, big moment was having done The Butler with Oprah Winfrey. I had shown her some footage of me, you know, uh, as King. I had done, I'd recorded myself doing the mountaintop speech and I showed it to her just to, you know, see what she thought. And from that moment on, she became obsessed. She was you're like, you were born to do this. How, what do we, what do we, we need to figure this out. As we were trying to sort of get towards making the film, I called her one day and I said, look, let's turn this energy into something real. Do you want to come and join us on this? He said, I'll do whatever. What do I need to do? I said, would you consider being a producer on it? <laughs> she said, what does that mean? <laughs> I said, I said, well, that means, you know, coming and helping us get the, food, the, the film off the ground. And she said, I'll do whatever I need to do because you were born to do this. And um, that was rocket fuel. I mean, literally from that moment on, that's when it really started to gear up. Even within the civil rights movement, women were marginalized. They were just as talented, they were just as fervent about the injustices of the day, but we were in a time where, even though we were fighting for equal rights, there was just an endemic sexism. And as a result, we don't have female champions of the movement. We don't have, you know, um, Annie Lee Cooper Boulevard. We don't have, um, you know, Fannie Lou Hamer uh, Highway. We don't have um, these incredible women who did incredible things, who sacrificed just as much, if not more, at times, um, being celebrated as part of the movement. So for me, uh, for a black woman to be at the helm of telling the story feels absolutely right. I just feel so blessed to be the one afforded this opportunity. Um, I think it helps that I'm British because I haven't grown up with Martin Luther King as um, uh, a deified figure in my life. So I can come at him more as a man, more as a character. My admiration for him has grown enormously in the time of learning about him. You couldn't wish for a better group of talented actors. And this is why I just feel Ava is so right for this film. She has such a great eye. You know, everyone in the film is not just there because they are great actors or because they have even a physical resemblance to the people they're playing. It's, they're good people as well. There's, there's such a feeling of service 
Um, which I think is absolutely right. And you can't act that. You can't teach that. It's innate or it's not. Carmen, who plays Coretta, is just phenomenal. The difference with this film is I can genuinely say that there is an overriding feeling of service. How can we serve this incredible community who daily put their lives on the line for the privileges we now enjoy. On top of that, it's kind of crazy that to have, you know, Martin Luther King is the only human being in the 20th century to have a, his own, to have a, a, a holiday named after him. No one else, no other historical figure in all of that, that, that hundred years in the 20th century. And yet, you know, almost 50 years after his death, no feature film in which he is the central character has been made. We're also aware that this is just an incredible opportunity to, to um, show not just the life of one man, but the lives of several people who gave their lives, really. And I spent quite a bit of time with Andrew Young, Ambassador Young, and um, who was very, very close with, uh, with Dr. King. And, you know, the thing that surprised me is, is how much uh, Ambassador Young would talk about uh, Dr. King's sense of humor, how much of a prankster he was, how much he loved to laugh, how, how much they did not feel like they were changing the world. You know, they, they just, there were these bunch of obstacles before them, these bunch of injustices, and history had just come to a point whereby it wasn't okay anymore. And they found themselves as preachers um, at that time who were very much the leaders of their community having to take the charge of, you know, trying to debunk this injustice. So it wasn't, A, they, they weren't sort of portentous, stoic young men who, you know, they were sort of muddling through as, as young men do, um, but they did not shy away from the task at hand. Dr. King always had, even at the Montgomery bus boycott at the age of 26, had this gravitas about him. You, 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 you can't get your head around the fact that he died at 39. He was in his 30s. All those images you see of him, he was in his 30s, sometimes in his 20s. And you think he was in his 50s. And, you know, that I think was to do with his gravitas. It was also to do with how much weight he was carrying on his shoulders. The humanity of the man, how burdened he was by a feeling of wanting to do right, of wanting to be accountable, of not wanting to be seen as, you know, giving the, away the money for the Nobel Prize because he never wanted to be accused of gaining anything for himself whilst in this struggle. And those are all attributes I hugely admire and I felt very keen to try and get into the film. This film very much gives you the groundwork for the America we now live in. Without King, there would be no Obama. They just wouldn't. Um, without King, what is going on with voting rights in this country now, that it's now being eroded, um, it wouldn't be as egregious. Because if you didn't have Bloody Sunday, if you didn't have the Voting Rights Act coming so soon after the Civil Rights Act, if you didn't have JFK dying, Dr. King dying, you know, Robert Kennedy dying, all within the 60s, all dying, arguably, I think almost certainly, for the freedoms we now enjoy, because people were so certain, certain sections of this society were so against the improvement to equality, the improvement to justice in this country, um, you, 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 you will not get a sense of the, uh, the America we now live in and, that ha and how high the cost, uh, what 
is being treated quite trivially. Now, that's the politics. Um, what I think is incredible in terms of just seeing this group of people is the fact that they are not gods. They are not superheroes. They were just people who did incredibly heroic things. And for me, the greatest attribute I think anyone possesses is self-sacrifice, which to me is the definition of love. And these people operated out of love in the face of hate. And we live in a world now where there is so much that, uh, so much violence, so much atrocity, so much inhumanity uh, towards ourselves as human beings. And so, you know, to have a, a film that reminds us of our, the beauty of our humanity, the power of peaceful protest, that we do have a voice uh, when we treat government and democracy in the way it should be treated, um, I think is I think is is much is much needed. And to have uh, an American like Dr. King, who has largely been reduced to a phrase "I have a dream," to give him context, I think is hugely important for so many young and old uh, people who maybe know less than they should. My job has been to find the blood and guts, the humanity, the, 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 the weaknesses, the, the foibles, the, the her heroism, all of those things in a human being with the voice, with his physicality, and then throw it away. You know, not think about it, and just hope that all the work, the months, the years of work, add to people seeing the spirit of him, not an imitation of him. And if that's what people get from watching the film, then I've done my job.